We got John in Melbourne, Florida. I can understand the emotional um, objection to like a, a murderer or whatnot. Um, all of a sudden, because of their faith, they are you know they're right with God just because of their faith. But what I think you're implying is that they're God is judging. You, you're presupposing there's some kind of standard. Why would God allow the murderer or the rapist to enter heaven? He's using a standard to judge them by. The problem is, is if, if God is using a standard to judge the rapist and the murderer. That means there's a standard, and we can't, we can't define where it begins and ends. So even Joe Blow, the neighbor who's never committed a crime, how do we know the standard ends at rape and murder? How do we know it doesn't go further than that? Because the whole, uh, the whole, what the Bible says is that we all sin. We all have, uh, we all have secret thoughts and, and uh, you know, things that go on on the inside, and you know that as well as I do. I mean, right. I know you're an atheist, that, but I know you have a conscience. You know right. when, it's not a. It's not a. It's not a matter of you do something against your wife. The problem is, is with that kind of. Uh, you're limiting God on what He can judge. You're saying God should only judge a rapist or a murderer, but you know Joe Blow, the neighbor who's always gone to work and takes care of his family, should enter heaven. What the Bible says is that there is a standard. The standard doesn't begin and end where we choose. The standard goes beyond that. I think that none uh, of us achieve it. So we can't sit there and reject the Bible. I mean, yes, we can. The claim you mentioned. Yes, we because can. God, well, it doesn't make sense because God would let a murderer. No, a no, rapist. John. Oh, no. Let me finish real quick. I'm sorry. Real quick. No, 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 no. You don't get to finish preaching if I'm sitting here objecting to what you're saying. I, I can barely hear you. That's why. I'm sorry for that. that that's fine. But I, you understand what I'm saying. I, we're, we got. For crying out loud. Oh, um, there we go. I was talking about. Um, that there are different standards that different Christian groups have claimed. I understand the, the position that you're talking about. Um, it was one that I used to uh, accept as well. What I'm saying is that you are fundamentally wrong. We can assess that standard and determine whether or not it is just and moral. The fact that some old book asserts that there is some higher authority, even if it's true, even if the, Bi if the Bible is true, and there is a God, and he's judging people by some standard, I find it morally repugnant and reprehensible, and I want nothing to do with him. Anybody who would advocate that person X deserves to be tortured forever in hell or annihilated simply because they could not believe something for which there was insufficient evidence, while some other credulous numbskull can go out and kill and murder and rape and have a deathbed that is not justice. It is not. And I am, yes, I am imposing my own moral standards on it. But you know what? I'm more moral than the God of the Bible. I'm more moral than any character in the Bible. And so are you. And I wish people like you would own up to that and realize it. Instead of saying, oh, there's some standard that we don't understand. Oh, for crying out loud. Is there any possible way you could conceive of a standard that would punish this person and not punish this person when everything about you tells you that this person is a sick evil predator and this person is an innocent good-hearted individual can you even remotely conceive of that and why would you care that somebody else can what i'm saying is if god can judge a rapist or a murderer what makes you think he can't judge us even joe Blow, the neighbor you and i we know we do wrong I'm saying if God, if God is going to judge us to the letter of the law, I mean, we, we all have a conscience. You know when you do wrong. I know when I do wrong. That means we're still breaking some kind of moral code. I'm not talking about where it comes from. Why does you know, God have this right? Because he's God. I mean, if he's going to judge the rapist yeah. and the murderer, so, who are you going to tell, how are you going to tell him that he can't judge me or you? How, how, is, why not? how does that make him any different from a mafia boss? I mean, if I'm the mafia boss and I come and say, you're going to pay this much vig or I'm going to break your legs, guess what? You pay that vig and I get to judge you because I'm the boss. If you had kids, would you ever build a torture chamber in your basement and torture them endlessly if they didn't love you? Do you yeah, think... I, I, do you, I, I, I want to get to the subject of hell. I, I agree. I oh, agree. of course you don't no, no, because listen, it listen, shows listen. the weakness of what you're saying. No, you're no, saying no, no. that God, get, God brought you into this world. He can take you out. God is the ultimate boss and he can do with you what you want. And I say that with that kind of, re with that kind of power comes responsibility. And it's patently absurd to, to go ahead and grant to some deity, whether he exists or not, that he has the right 
to treat the person who lied and the person who raped equally, as if they've committed equal wrongs. It's absurd, and you fundamentally know it. We can't limit God's judgment to only rapists and murderers. I didn't, I didn't all, ever say that. I didn't yeah, ever say that. It. I gave a specific example that showed the high contrast. Now, let me give a slightly I different... I think you're limiting the judgment power of God. He can judge all of us. And I say you can't judge any of us, whether he exists or not. Okay. There you go. I, I didn't I say that judge. God was limited in what he could judge um, by those standards. I'm, I'm assuming, hey, if there is a God and he judges me by those standards, I can't tell him he can't. Obviously, he's the one with the power. He's the mafia boss who can break my legs. All I can say is... I don't accept those standards. I don't find them just. I find it absurd to find anybody who claims that they're just. I'm not saying who he can and can't judge because I don't have that power over him, except for the fact that he's a fictional being as far as I'm concerned. This type of, of, of system is, a, is a, uh, a dictatorship, a fiat, that makes um, all, uh, all crimes, all sins, which I reject that concept, but all, all wrongs equal and everybody begins with this pitiful, poor state of being worthless and, and in need of redemption from before they were born, even. And those who don't believe the, uh, the unbelievable are somehow punished. But if that's the way the system absolutely works, actually works, then my assessment is that it is immoral. And I don't, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm baffled by people who could claim that it's moral. And yet, people like you, who don't actually come out and say, oh, it's definitely a moral system. What you do is you say, God is God. He can judge you. What a lame-ass excuse is that? If my dad beat me when I didn't do anything wrong, and your answer was, well, he's your dad. He gets to beat you. You're a dick. That implies we all break some kind of moral standard. That's why we're all held accountable, and that's why our actions can't get us out of it, because by nature we do these things. And that's why, okay. and the whole... The whole story of God is not that he's going to break our legs. He sent Christ for us. Oh, bullshit. No, that was bullshit. No, 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 no. No, you're done. You're done. That is the well, biggest, that, that, the is, the, that is the, ex break our leg. no, he's, that is the excuse. That's the mafia boss saying, I'm going to break your legs unless Jesus unless is what? the unless in the story. Well, unless you pay me would be the mafia boss, and that's what Jesus would represent. Jesus is the loophole. Jesus is the unless in the story. It does not make God moral. It does not make the biblical story become suddenly valiant and, 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 and worthy of respect. Well, in fact, killing, killing somebody that is admittedly innocent in order to compensate for the crime of someone else innocent, did. Though, that's what I just but he's talking about Jesus. Jesus. Oh, to sorry. slaughter an innocent person and say, well, that's just recompense for, for the crap you did. That's not moral either. Plus, it's absurd, this idea of blood sacrifice. It is. How in I, the world does bleeding make somebody that did I mean, something wrong all of a sudden not you've got wrong? this. You've I mean, got this system that I say is immoral, and you think that the correction to this is for God to sacrifice himself to himself as a loophole for rules that he created that were unjust and that this makes the rules just? That's crazy. I think at the end of the day, we all are still, we all still sin, we all know, we're all imperfect. Uh, but your, your mafia scenario is, I don't think it's accurate. You're saying the mafia boss is saying, I'll break your legs or else. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying the mafia Unless. boss has every right to break your legs, but he doesn't. Okay. And he all, and Fine. I, You're done. I hung up. He does. The mafia boss does not have every right Unless to break my up. legs. I'm sorry that your religion has so polluted your brain that you're unable to actually see what is immoral about what you're thinking. But that statement from you sums up everything that I tried to say 10 minutes ago. The mafia boss does not have every right to break his legs. And the moral and just thing to do is to stand up and say, no, you don't. And if somebody is asserting that they're working for a mafia boss and this mafia boss doesn't even necessarily exist and they want you to pay, which is exactly what, what's happening here because we have no reason to think that this God exists. I don't care if he does, this particular God that you're talking about. It doesn't matter. It's immoral. It's nonsense. It's immoral and it's nonsense. He doesn't have the right to break my legs. He doesn't have the right to judge me. And if he does so, if he happens to exist and do this, by standards that I happen to think are immoral, then he's a dick. I can, may, may not be able to do anything to stop him, but the ant can't do anything to stop me from squishing it. But it doesn't make me any less of a dick. How dare you come on here and apologize for it and shuffle actual comments 
that you and I both know. You know what's right and wrong. And shuffle it off as, oh, you have a conscience and you've sinned. Okay, well, that's, that's irrelevant. We haven't even talked about that yet, about how I reject this notion of sin, or that, as Tracy pointed out earlier, that thinking something is somehow wrong. And then you come on and, no, 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 Jesus is the excuse. Let me tell you something. According to the Bible, God basically chucked everybody into the pool and said, I got a life preserver. Anybody want to not drown? He's ultimately responsible. The story, I, I, and I agree, I, I, I'm getting worked up, and it's not because I think that there's any truth to the story. It's that I'm so freaking offended and pissed off that there are people out there who take this fairy tale and make excuses for it and say that this is something good that people should be applying to their lives or that we should make 2010 the year of the Bible. Listen to yourselves. I'm more moral than that, and so are you, and you guys need to just own it. It's insane. Ugh.